Hey, um, it's been a while since I've kind of got in front of a camera and done this, you know, since I guess when I was filming for the October vlogs, but hey, I'm back. So the other day, this YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, the Project Air YouTube channel, hit a thousand subscribers, which is mad because like those sort of metrics are, are crazy because it's like that's people actually choosing to follow the things that I do and I think that that's kind of cool. So I thought it'd be fun to do like a Q&A or just something where, you know, I can sort of maybe give some advice or just answer some sort of fun questions. So yeah, let's go, I guess. Okay, so I'm gonna start with Instagram. Um, I'm probably gonna say people's usernames wrong, so I apologize in advance for that. Amy Music with a three says, how to choose bass or how to sound design bass. So with bass in my tracks, I mean, I've pretty much since I've been doing Project Air for a long time now, I've been using um, just like a bass that I got that's like super cheap. It is this bass. It is this. It is a, um, a Squire Jaguar bass. Um, it was super duper cheap. I maybe picked it up for like a hundred pounds. I've never even changed the strings on it. Um, it like, I really don't know enough about bass to kind of really invest in it. Um, but this is literally on every single Project Air track, I think bar the ambient tracks. And this has been great. But if you don't have a bass guitar, because they can be pretty expensive and they can also be pretty massive, like even the short scale bass is the biggest of all of the guitars that I have, um, then I would probably recommend like if you want a nice clean sounding bass, just using like a sine wave um, and kind of just lowering the attack on it a little bit and just lowering, um, just giving it a little bit of release so it kind of doesn't have too much of a clicky sound and using that for like any sort of root notes or bass lines. Um, you could always layer that up with like a sampled bass guitar from like a native instruments library and I'm sure there's probably some great free ones out there as well. I don't really do a lot of bass sound design personally. That's more something that I would do for like EDM, but for the sort of music that I do as Project Air, I'm either bass guitar or I'm just using like sine waves. Like all of the bass in my ambient tracks is all just sine waves using Serum, but I mean you can use any synth that has um, a sine wave oscillator. Nesson has asked, what got you into making lo-fi slash ambient music? Uh, well, I mean, I've been making ambient music since maybe like 2012 um, in different kind of forms under different aliases. Um, I started doing like ambient and post-rock um, around about 2013. I've always been into like post-rock bands, like bands like Hammock, um, Explosions in the Sky, um, This Will Destroy You, Rianne Sheehan, Olafur Arnold's, like just like bands and artists like that um, have kind of always been massively inspiring to me. And when I kind of got into lo-fi, that was around about sort of 2015, 2016. And I never really thought about making it. It wasn't really until sort of 2019, 2020, where I started to kind of make the connection that actually I could sort of bridge the two things that I enjoyed, which was kind of, you know, guitar ambience and the sort of like lo-fi chill beats, chill hop sort of stuff. And it just sort of make sen made sense to me. And it was something that I thought I could maybe bring something unique to and kind of blend those two things together in a way that sort of I understood, um, which which was like just, it kind of led to all this. So that's kind of cool. But I mean, I've been making music under different aliases for, I think like, well, I mean, I've been writing songs since about 2007, but I've been like producing since like 2011, 2012. So pretty much 10 years at this point, which is kind of crazy. Catcat102 asks, what's your favorite song that you made? Um, that is a big question. It's probably one that hasn't been released yet because I've got some really cool stuff that's unreleased. Um, if it's for Project Air though, that if we kind of just narrow it down to like released songs for Project Air, maybe Songbird. I think Songbird is one of the most special songs that I've ever made. Uh, then there's Breathe, which I absolutely love off of the After EP. When Viv um, sent me their parts for that, I was just like, blown away by it and I still am I still listen to it and I'm just like in awe that that's something that I worked on um, which is crazy uh, it changes a lot to be honest um, like I mean I'm still really fond of all the lifted spirits EP like that has a really special place in my heart and it all falls into place as well like it's like that's such a monumental song for Project Air um, and I don't think I could pick of my favorite song ever um, it's probably an air song that hasn't been released yet um, yeah. <laughs> Elaz has asked, did you do donate your hair when you cut it? Um, I didn't, but I bleached it. So doesn't that mean that like the hair's like kind of crap anyway? I don't, I don't know. Maybe I should have, maybe that's an oversight. I don't know. I'm gonna get canceled. I'm sorry if I'm saying this username wrong, but nzan or nzan underscore nz 
um, asked, when did you get into making music and what slash who inspired you? Um, I mean, I've, I've always loved music for like as long as I can remember now and I kind of got in like my first album was Linkin Park's Meteora in somewhere in the early 2000s. Um, I fell in love with Numb on the radio and then kind of bought the album with my pocket money and never really listened to like the full album until kind of one like when I was kind of in my early years in secondary school, high school for you Americans um, and just on like a really kind of emo evening I kind of put the whole album on and just absolutely fell in love with it and from there I mean it's it's kind of gone into various things my love of electronic music and kind of electronic production and kind of doing everything myself kind of came from um, artists like Owl City um, I was massively into Adam Young's music and across all of his side projects which if you wonder about most of my influence like most of my musical influence comes from his kind of musical sphere which is really really cool um, I highly recommend um, his scores stuff under his own uh, under his own name on Spotify, just uh, Adam Young. I also recommend his ambient stuff under Port Blue. If you like my music, that's why you probably like my music. I mean, I've been inspired by all sorts over the years. I'm really inspired nowadays by acts like Hammock. I'm really inspired by John Bellion, the 1975. Uh, Eden is a huge inspiration of mine. Uh, <laughs> All sorts, honestly. Um, it, Porter Robinson, I've got a poster right there and I'm not even calling it out. There, there's there's so much stuff and I, I find myself inspired by so many different things. Um, and I like to try and bring that to Project Air where I can, but that's why I have so many different side projects. Um, so, yeah, I mean, all, all sorts. I actually have a playlist on Spotify that I'll put in, a link to in the description for a playlist I make called... Uh, it's not lo-fi, but it's still good and uh, that is everything that isn't lo-fi stuff if you want to kind of hear like a, a mix of my influences that's the that's the playlist to check out so i recommend that all right so for these next two we're going to jump onto the computer um, and first up kevin lotus has asked can you recommend us some free plugins so we're going to hop over to the pc and i'm going to show you some plugins okay so um i've just made a quick session i've got a really basic beat going it's not very good it's not very well mixed or anything like that I've just got a little bit of like bus compression on it, uh, like parallel compression. Um, and so let's do some, let's do some nice, quick, free plugins that you might not know about um, because I'm not going to do like the lab stuff or like Valhalla Supermassive. I'm just going to do three quick plugins that you might not have um, heard or seen that are really, really cool and can be used in some really, really interesting ways. So first up is a piano because who doesn't love a piano? Uh, and this is Memoir Piano, uh, which is by Audio Ollie, which is a free piano. I'll put a link to this in the description. Um, it has a bunch of different modes. So in Memoir Piano, they have texture modes. So you can have these ones like this sadness patch that I really, really like. Let's turn the volume of that up a little bit. It's really, really cool. Uh, there's also like some stuff that's kind of more like particle -y. It has like these sort of arpeggiated sort of patterns that just sound beautiful. Uh, really, really nice stuff. Um, then there's a bunch of different piano modes as well. There's like a, a felt piano, there's a concert grand which has like soft modes and that has a normal and dark modes. Um, and you also have a pedal noise patch as well. There's like this felt one. which is really, really cool. Um, I, at the moment, have been really, really loving the Concert Grand Soft Dark, I think it is. Uh, yes, um, which is a really lovely one. So I'm just gonna lay down some piano chords uh, using this just over the beat, and so you can sort of hear it in context. Uh, let's just check this in here. see how it sounds there. It sounds really nice if you turn the velocities down as well. Let's just transpose that snare down so it's not quite so bright. Just 
just a really, really nice sounding piano that just, it kind of, it's a bit different to something like the Labs Free Piano, which is also a great piano, but um, this is just something I've been using quite a lot on all my recent songs. It just sounds really clean and really, really lovely. Um, so highly recommend that. Next up, this is Dext from Digital Suburban. It is kind of a sort of emulation of the Yamaha DX7, um, which Arteria also do a version of that is nicer, but it's a it's a paid synthesizer. This is completely free. Um, it has just some of these like really classic sounds that you would hear um, on the on the DX7, and I think just some like new patches as well. I haven't experimented with this too much, but it's something I want to start using a lot more in my productions because it sounds really really cool. Um, like there's this pad. lovely soft sort of sounds to uh, to it that just you don't really get kind of with a lot of synths it's not quite as like aggressive um there's some great stuff on here that's my audio engine glitching out a little bit there but uh we obviously have some classic sort of synth sounds on there Really, really cool sounding synth that I really really enjoy um, and want to start using a lot more so something a bit different for you um, and the last plugin I want to show off is one that I talk about a little bit on like my Instagram live streams um, and that is uh, I think you can use it for free in the reactor um, player but um, which I think is a free thing from native instruments but if you have reactor this is a great thing I mean reactor is a fantastic thing anyway because uh, if you actually google the reactor uh, user library, um, I think it's called. Um, there's a bunch of these patches and synths and effects modules that people have made, um, and this is a really great one for free that is called VHS, and it gives you that sort of classic sort of like lo-fi sound. So if we hear that piano now, uh, the presets sound great. It's very like Vaporwave. something a bit different to like RC20 or like Sketch Cassette or like uh, the Archeria Tape Mellow Fire or something. It has all these noise modules, you can make stuff mono, which is great, I really love it. There's just some really great controls in here and the interface looks great as well, which is awesome. So highly recommend checking this out. Um, it's just something a bit different that can give you some really cool different sort of flavors. Um, so yeah. Next up, uh, CJ Lam, or L-A-M, I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced, so I apologize, has asked, how would you recommend new producers to start slash build nice piano melodies? And again, we're gonna hop back into the door and I'm gonna show you some cool little things that I do that kind of help me start songs. This kind of goes with like, um, a lot of the other kind of advice that I would give, but like, it, it for me, it's all about feeling. Like, I don't try and like, find a melody first so like I always start with a beat um, and then I might start with some chords so like I've kind of done there just like a really basic three chord progression um, and what I might do then is I rather than actually kind of focus on building a melody straight away I usually try and add like some other kind of interesting parts around it so first up I might add a bass part and you could do this with a synth if this is I'm just going to play root notes for this which so we're just doing this with an F A uh, an A and a G so all I'm going to do is just go like this sounding quite a bit more interesting um, now that we have a bass line in there and like I say we could do that with a synth we could do that with a bass guitar we can just do it with a sine wave it doesn't need to be too super complicated because all I was doing was playing root notes then what I might do is I might add like um, and I do this a lot in my songs is I would add like a bunch of repeating parts so I might um, record a guitar part where I'm just playing like just three notes which is uh, I would just find something where I can repeat it so like So now we could just record this. And then I might record 
record a second part for that as well. So now that we've got that, we can mute that one and find just another thing that we could play. Um, <laughs> these two parts and what I'm going to do for the time being is pan one right and pan one left. Turn them down a little bit. And what these are doing is I don't want either of these parts to be like leads. And you could be doing these on a piano, you could be doing them on a Rhodes, you could be doing them on pretty much any instrument that you fancy. And what I like about doing this is it sort of adds this like movement and sort of emotion and just kind of these sort of more interesting elements to a track without kind of needing to find a melody. So immediately What I really love about doing this is that now, if I want to find a piano melody, it becomes so much easier because I'm able to feel a melody and to find something that feels nice. So I can, what I'll usually do at this point is just jam over it. So we could just have the piano going. jam something out and find something by feeling it rather than kind of focusing too much on the sort of like the technical elements of what scale that I'm in. I can write something that I just feel, you know? Um, so yeah, I hope that this was interesting, but, and you don't need to be using guitars or anything like this for this. You could do this on anything and just find like nice repeating parts that can add a bit of texture. And you can even remove those repeating parts later on um, because like for me, they're just sort of a, a sort of motor for finding the kind of real sort of meat of the song um, and finding it through emotion and feeling rather than kind of sitting down and, you know, just listening to the piano. I'm kind of finding something by feeling. I'm gonna keep saying that, but yeah, I hope this was, I hope that was helpful. All right, we're gonna hop on over to Twitter and uh, go through the questions that I got on Twitter. Uh, Steezy Prime um, has asked, more vlogs soon? Um, probably not. Unless like everyone really wants the vlogs back, um, I'm probably not gonna bring them back. I, I've been trying to think of other things that I can do that are maybe along those lines, but I, I just think that like they were, they were so long to make, I had to remember to film every almost every single day, and there needed to be something interesting. Um, ironically, January would have been really interesting because I've made about 40 songs this month, um, which was crazy, but it would have just been a lot of filming in here, and it, like visually, it just wasn't like varied enough, so I kind of just fell out of love with doing it, and I got into like a bit of a sort of depression in like October, so I kind of said, like, you know, it's not, it's not the one. Um, I wanted to try and bring some like positive content and I wanted to kind of go and take some time away from the YouTube stuff to really think about what I wanted to make and how I could sort of use that format to like help people. Cause the vlogs, I think they were cool and I like having them as like a diary, but I don't think they, I just don't think they were very visually interesting. But if everyone wants them back, please leave a comment. And if, the, if there's like huge support for it there, then I will definitely think about bringing them back. Cause I want to bring the content that like people actually want. So if there's anything you want me to make, then let me know. <laughs> Gramps has asked, will there be a Discord server soon? No, I I don't see the point in having like a project at a Discord server. I've explored the idea of setting up a Discord server for like different things. Um, so I have a Discord server that I've made, but I haven't promoted yet for like UK based um, beat makers and producers to kind of get together. Um, so I can arrange like IRL stuff because I'm sick of everything being online. But and that could be, you know, it can also, like, it's not just exclusive to that. Like, if you're from another place, you can kind of join to to meet people that are based in the UK. Or if you're even visiting the UK, you could come in and be like, hey, does anyone want to get a drink? Because I'm here for this time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I don't really see the point in having an artist Discord server. And, like, no hate on anyone that has them. But, like, I have a lot of Discord servers already. And it's just, like, I imagine everyone else does. 
So I don't know. Again, unless there's like massive, massive support for it and like people really, really want it, then like then then I'll make one. But it's like it's it's a huge kind of commitment to make, and it's also just like if you're in if you're if you're a Discord user, I don't want to give you like another server to add to your pile of servers. Um, but then you know I don't really know Discord that well, so I didn't know you could put servers into folders until the other day. I'm a boomer. Pranav Krishnan has asked, how do I find out what elements to add in my track? How do I improve in my music how to make drum samples? It's kind of three questions in one. Um, so how do I find out what elements to add in my track? Go by feel. Like really like for me, I don't kind of sit down and plan out tracks. Like it really is like I will listen to something on loop and like see what I'm sort of hearing in my head. Do I, does it want a synth on there? Do I want to add more guitars? Does it need an acoustic guitar? Does it maybe need my voice? Does it need like a sort of vocal sample that I could record myself? Does it need more percussion? Does it just need some foley or some atmospheric samples? It's kind of, listen to like the feel. Like I really try to go, I, we kind of talked about this with the, the kind of starting ideas and stuff, but it kind of is the same for like, for like figuring out where to go next with an idea is like, try and go by feeling. Like don't try and sit there and think about it technically or how to please a certain label or anything like that. Like what, what, do your ears tell you like should be there like what are you really hearing um, like really try and anticipate like what should appear next um, and like I guess I guess a good piece of advice with that is don't always listen to your track just looping in like one section maybe listen to the whole thing and kind of don't look at your door maybe like you know turn your PC monitor or your laptop screen off um, or like look somewhere else and kind of just listen to it as a listener and try and kind of think about what you'd expect to happen. When do you get bored? When do you think like, hey, this bit has been going on for too long now? Like when when does it feel like it needs to change? Because when you just listen to like an eight or a 16 bar loop on repeat, you're not gonna get bored of it because you know it's looping. So you've closed off this kind of thing in your mind where like you're not thinking about the dynamic and the changing and kind of, kind of the flow of the track, you're just thinking about that one section. So try and listen to everything in a wider context as well. How do I improve in my music? Just keep making music. Like honestly, I think one of the things that has made me so much better is actually finishing music. I had two projects that weren't Project Air that I spent about two to two and a half years on. I had two different albums. One was a 10 track album and one was an 18 track album. And both of them, whilst I love them and they are so, so important to me as projects, because I spent so long on those selections of songs and never finished any of them until like you know two to two and a half years later, I wasn't learning from it, and I wasn't. And the things that I was learning from it, I wasn't able to put into new ideas because there's almost an element of like, you know, effectively, it's it's almost like you're cooking, right? And you start a recipe and you make a mistake, and you go, okay, well, I I won't make that mistake again. But you've already started that thing that you're cooking, so it's like, okay, well, then you know the next time you start a dish. And if I don't start another dish for two years, then the likelihood of me learning from those mistakes and then making the next mistakes that I need to make to keep learning isn't gonna happen. So just make as many tracks as you can. Even if you don't release all of them, just make as many things as you can and tell yourself that they are finished. Set yourself deadlines. Say like, I'm gonna finish a track every two days or every, I'm gonna try and do three tracks a week or just set yourself goals and like really hold them to yourself because you'll feel really proud of yourself when you do hit it and it'll just help you find things along the way in your workflow and just in your life that maybe need to be looked at to kind of make that process better and more rewarding and you will just get better and you will just get better without noticing. How to make drum samples. Um, now I don't make a lot of drum samples myself and there's definitely great plugins and stuff for making like kick drums and everything like that and there's gonna be way better tutorials online but I mean I do record a bunch of like percussion stuff myself so I just record like me tapping on a guitar or something and it can be a phone mic, it could be a studio mic, like there's so many things I've recorded on my phone that get used in tracks. Um, so just like get like a wave recorder um, app on your phone or something and just record stuff like you know just create like a 10 minute recording of just you going around you know, your house, your flat, you like outside somewhere, just, you know, hitting things together and kind of like creating just like all these different samples, because I promise you there'll be so much stuff that you can use. And it's way simpler than you think. Um, making stuff from scratch, especially um, like effects samples is super interesting. And it really does give your music like a more unique flavor. So I highly recommend it. Um, but in terms of making like actual like snare samples and stuff, I'm probably not your guy. <laughs> homework Radio, uh, shout out to Homework Radio by the way, because I have an EP coming with Homework Radio this month, because when this goes up, it'll be February. Um, has asked, what instrument do you think is the most annoying? It's the recorder.
The, the only right answer to that is the recorder. It is the worst instrument known to man. Like, I don't think, like, as good as people are with it, no hate, but it just never sounds good. T3 Chris has asked, what was the biggest struggle slash challenge in your music journey and how did you overcome slash master it? Also, any chance for more little music? On the little, on the little music question, which is another one of my aliases, yes, I do plan on doing something this year. I'm, I'm really excited, but it'll probably be like in autumn, winter. It's gonna be a while, basically, but it, it is really quite high up on my to-do list. Um, the biggest struggle slash challenge in your music journey, what was that? I'd probably say, writer's block, um, because it's a challenge that kind of crops up in different ways. Um, like, I mean, you can call it different things, beat block, creativity block, writer's block, whatever you want to call it. Um, but for me, like, it was kind of understanding how to deal with it in the different ways that it pops up. Because, you know, I, for a long time, I just sort of like accepted it for what it was. And, you know, in that, I wasn't allowing myself to really understand why it was happening or the right way to deal with it. I literally had like whole years of writer's block. So like 2016, I made barely any music because I just accepted that that's how it was. Maybe I was done and I kind of felt very defeated by it. Whereas over time, I've kind of learned to really start to recognize early signs of it and, you know, burnout and stuff like that and actually understand when to step away. Because th there would be days where I really wanted to make music and I really felt inspired and I wanted to work on something, but I would sit at, at the desk and just nothing would happen. Like I would hate everything that I come up with and it just wasn't good. Um, and I think what I've realized over time is I need to recognize that as early on as I can and go and do something else. Go for a walk, play a video game, watch a movie, go see some friends, go visit my family, you know, like do, do things that kind of take me out of that world for long enough that I can really kind of build up this excitement for it again. Um, so it's like this relationship with like my sort of creativity and learning how to balance that. I think that was probably the hardest thing. I don't think it was something technical because there's always different technical challenges, but I think that was probably the biggest thing overall. And since kind of dealing with it, it's enabled me to work incredibly fast. Now, like when I kind of am, you know, in my best sort of state of mind, I can make so much stuff and so quickly. I, I think I've done like four or five, you know, demos in a day before, and that's that's amazing. Last but not least, uh, Va Vachi, Vachie, I don't know if I'm saying your name correctly. I'm probably not, and I apologize. Uh, has asked, uh, getting your music heard, paying for submissions to label slash pay playlist slash promotion, is it worth it? What are some of your marketing strategies? If you could go back and change one thing about how you approach marketing, what would you do first instead? Let's uh, let's let's unpack this, shall we? And let's let's answer all of them. Um, so paying for submissions, okay. Paying for submissions to labels, no, never do it. Never ever ever. If a la if a label wants you to pay them money to send you a submission for a song that they're going to take a percentage of royalties from. That's the dumbest idea ever, and that's like that's just a bad business move to begin with. And it's if the moment someone ever said to me, I've, thankfully I've not had it, but if someone said, oh, like you know, it's you got to PayPal me this much or send me a label via coffee submissions or whatever, no, go away. Like don't don't ever do that. I, like ask yourself about like the kind of the ongoing like business relationship. If that's how it starts, it's probably not going to get much better beyond that. Paying for submissions to playlists slash promotion. Is it worth it? I think it's worth experimenting with, um, but ultimately I think it comes down to like what you want to get out of something. Um, I think in my earlier days, I, I think it was worth it. I think what I valued most about paying for playlist submissions and getting onto playlists at the start of Project Air was not actually the streams or the kind of monthly listeners or anything like that. It was actually the fact that it exposed me enough to kind of build up a network and kind of make connections with producers. Like I connected to people like ASIC and kind of just various other people in the community. Um, and that like helped me kind of learn things and learn about labels and learn how things worked because I had no clue. I didn't know about all the different labels in this scene. I was just kind of self-releasing stuff and kind of hoping for the best. So it depends what you want to get out of it. And actually nowadays, um, I mean, it's kind of, I guess it's easy for me when like I'm kind of talking from where I'm at. I think it, in those early days, it is worth kind of exploring things like Submit Hub, Daily Playlist, Soundplay and stuff to try and get on playlists. But actually nowadays, I find that once I've kind of got enough of a sort of follow account on Spotify and things like that, that actually I can sort of get a good amount of organic reach and then I don't actually 
see much point in paying for playlist submissions on places like Submit Hub. I think Submit Hub has a real problem with how it's kind of run these days and I have done submissions on songs that have got editorials and all of them get declined bar like maybe two or three um, and I will usually submit to about 20 to 25 places on there and I'm seeing more and more um, the case that those songs are getting put into playlists for a very short amount of time. They are getting what Submit Hub now calls shout outs, where the, the curators get paid and you get put into a playlist that is basically, it has maybe less than 500 followers and the actual amount of listeners you're gonna get from that is probably nothing. So I think once you kind of get past that initial stage and you maybe have the support of labels behind you, I think that I would maybe look at other ways in which you can inve invest. Is that something like growing your own playlist? Is that something like maybe running your own kind of ads specifically to your music to try and capture listeners rather than trying to kind of pay curators. I've actually had better success on free sites like Daily Playlist and Soundplate these days. As much as I might not get a response, it's free. Um, the only downside is I, my Spotify account gets full up with playlists that I have to that have follow gates, which is then you kind of have to ask yourself where are these followers actually coming from if they're all just follow gates from producers. So. It's a messy world, kind of submitting for playlists. I'm really, I could do a whole video on it easily. I'm trying to go as quick as I can here. But I think to, to begin with, it's worth it, it's worth it and it's worth experimenting with just to kind of get your own research and understanding of how it works. And also to kind of learn what curators are maybe good and bad. And I do think that Submit Hub has a pretty good system for actually giving you loads of data on curators and actually seeing what sort of coverage they provide. Um, but really ask yourself what you want to get out of it and what your goals are for it. If it's, you know, growing streams, then are you going to make that amount back in royalties or are you just getting your numbers up for the sake of getting numbers up? What are some of your marketing strategies? My marketing strategies are not great. I'm not amazing at marketing. I could be way, way better. Um, but I do think that ultimately I try and kind of focus more on the music first, which is not the best way to do it in today's climate. You know, it's it's all about kind of promoting on places like TikTok and Instagram Reels and stuff like that and running ads and everything, which I don't do. I don't currently run ads for Project Air at all. Um, but I mean, my marketing strategies are really just kind of posting about stuff in a way that feels real and organic. I, I, I think if I have to kind of put together like silly videos to try and kind of sell my work then I may be being a bit disingenuous and I'm not really being myself so it's for me like promotion is like it's it's a difficult thing to balance but I always try and just be myself and say things that I would actually say in real life and how I would actually sell someone on my music you know face to face rather than kind of just posting and being like hey go and stream it and I'm I also kind of believe very much in trying to get on camera and actually get to kind of show you all who I am because like I looked back I remember having this moment where I looked back at my Instagram feed and it was all just like album artwork album artwork album artwork album artwork and I'm like yeah but if every single post is me just going I've got a new song out I've got a new song out I've got a new song out there's like no connection right and this is a tricky thing right because when you look at the genre of lo-fi and chill beats and stuff like that, it's, it's very passive. Like, no one's really, like, none of us, even people who have, you know, two million plus monthly listeners, we have to be real and acknowledge that none of them are going to be selling out a stadium. You know, no one's going to be doing a tour anytime soon. Um, so in that, it's like, okay, if, if it's passive and most people aren't actively going, well, who, who's the artist on this? Who wrote this song? Then, like... I understand kind of not really kind of putting loads into promotion, but at the same time, I always, the way I look at it is I think, well, what if I capture that one person's attention and they go, this person's name is, you know, Project Air has come up a few times. Let's go and see what this person's about. And if they go on my socials and stuff and they see that it's just album artwork, it's just, you know, me celebrating streams and listen accounts and stuff like that. And there's never anything of me saying who I am and like what I'm about and what I'm inspired by and actually kind of what I even look like, you know, then, I potentially lose that person and for me it's it's all about the long game and kind of actually trying to create something that I feel is worth engaging with. Um, at least that's kind of my goal um, and that's something that I kind of carry into the way I market Project Air. It's not, I, you know, I'm not aggressive in my marketing and that's intentional. Um, I just want to kind of put out fun and exciting things. But I mean, it, your mileage may vary and, you know, your goals may vary as well. Like some people don't want to be building up like an like an artist world maybe people some people just want to be putting out music and they don't care you know how they're seen and that's totally fine too but I think it's worth having that sort of internal conversation with yourself and saying 
this is who I want to be and this is what I want to do and these are my goals with this project and kind of understanding it and being clear on it so that at least that can help you make sort of clear simple decisions I guess with how you choose to market your music and the last thing if you could go back and change one thing about how you approach marketing what uh, what would you do first instead um, I think I'd just go back and make the music earlier um, because I think it's it, it, making this sort of style of music has always uh, was like a real breath of fresh air for me it finally felt like I had a, an outlet for saying all the things I wanted to say musically um, I mean I kind of liked how I marketed Project Air to begin with because a lot of it was it was kind of doing you know campaigns on Summit Hub but it was also doing like it was kind of I, I lucked out I guess because it was at the start of Covid and I had just started a new job and I didn't have a lot of things to do so I pretty much just spent any spare time I had in the, in the day and in the evening and stuff sorry to the people I used to work with doing playlist submissions I was just at work doing playlist submissions I was on Soundplay I was on Reddit I was on Twitter I was looking for anything that had playlist submissions okay so my camera just decided to stop filming so um, but I think I think we we're pretty much there thank you to everyone that submitted questions um, I was a bit worried that maybe we'd only get like one question and this would be a really short and boring video um, but this has been a lot of fun, so thank you so much. Um, what is there to promo at the moment? Uh, my new air single, Last Kiss, uh, has just come out. So please go and stream that. It'd be awesome. Um, and there's another one out at the end of February, which I'm super excited for. Um, there's a Project Air EP coming out in February with Homework Radio, which I'm really excited for you all to hear. Uh, the Ambient After EP has been doing amazingly, so thank you so much to everyone that has been streaming that. That honestly means so much because that's such a personal project to me. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff coming out this year. It's going to be a crazy year for music for me, um, and I'm really, really excited to share it all with you. And there'll be more videos like this very soon as well. So yeah, uh, I hope you're all doing well. And if you've watched all the way to the end, thank you so much. Um, if there's anything that you know you'd like to see a video on, or like I said about the vlogs and stuff, please feel free to leave a comment. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. So thank you so much, and have a great day slash evening morning, whatever time it is for you, and I'll see you soon. So, bye.